So the HV project started about 15 years ago, but it was based on tube technologies. And tube technology is something T plus A is doing since the 1980s. At that time, we produced high voltage amplifiers to drive electrostatic speakers directly meaning without output transformer. Since that time, we have a long tradition in building tube amplifiers. In parallel to the tube amplifiers, T plus A always produced semiconductor amplifiers as well. And I was always interested in the reasons why tubes somehow sound different than semiconductors. My finding then was that one of the main differences between semiconductors and tubes is the rails voltage. Tubes operate on much higher rails voltages than semiconductors. I began uh, experimenting with semiconductor amplifiers using also very high rail voltages. And when I say high rail voltages, I mean something like plus minus 350, 400 volts for, for an amplifier. Normally, semiconductor amplifiers don't use that high voltages. The higher the rails voltage, the more linear the amplifier works. Just by raising the rails voltages, you can very easily linearize the behavior of your amplifying stages. And this idea was the basic idea behind our HV technology. We produced prototypes of first amplifiers operating on really high uh, rails voltages. The results were so good and the linearity of these amplifiers was so good that we could almost completely forget about things like feedback. We could produce an amplifier which didn't need feedback to get a very linear error-free response. When we first measured our prototype amplifiers it was astonishing to me that the amplifier characteristics did not change with frequency. So, for example, the distortion spectrum at low frequencies, say 100 Hz, or at 1 kHz or at 10 kHz, they were completely identical. Also, the damping factor and the dynamic behavior of the amplifiers stays completely constant over frequency. It's a very crucial point for an amplifier that all its characteristics do not change with frequency. And now, this is one of the main reasons why these amplifiers sound so natural. So about the HV technology, as we say in German, es gibt keine Rose ohne Dorn, or in English, there's no rose without a thorn. Of course, the HV technology has some drawbacks, if you like. One thing is that HV technology is expensive. For the high voltages, we need special transistors high voltage capacitors, we need high voltage power supplies. All this makes these amplifiers expensive. But the result is so overwhelming that we like to spend this money to get to these results which could not be achieved by normal semiconductor technology. We also, of course, wanted to know what HV technology could bring to other devices like preamplifiers or even D2A converters. And so we applied our ideas to these kinds of devices as well and we found the same results. In the HV series we use HV technology from the source devices through the preamplifiers and the power amplifiers. So the whole chain uses HV technology. HV technology using these high voltages means that we cannot use standard off-the-shelf operational amplifiers. So we have to build the whole circuits from discrete components. But this is another advantage for us because we can exactly select the components as we need them and we are not bound to off-the-shelf components. And so we can tailor all our circuits exactly to the needs of the amplifier and to the results we want to have. So this transition to HV technology took place around the year 2010. We made our first HV designs based on an amplifier from the foregoing V-series. The V-series was a pure tube amplifier series. We transferred the circuits of the then M10 amplifier to HV technology and we produced the PA3000 HV which was the first device in the HV series followed by the MP3000 
as a source. Finally, I have to say that uh, developing the H3 series was really a joy over all the years because we were not restricted in any way in price or components or whatever. And so for an engineer, it was really a dream to uh, develop this series of devices.